What's up, Thumpers? Welcome back to a very exciting review. I'm so excited to be talking about The Mandalorian. The very first episode has officially debuted on Disney+, Plus, which launched officially today. Mm-hmm. Mm, I've been waiting, I've been waiting. Oh, <laughs> there thanks. you go, there it's you a, go. Look, it's a broken headset. Everybody, We're running another show downstairs at the same time, so... Yeah. It's not gonna. It's not going to stay up, is it? Probably not. It'll stay. I want, It'll it, stay. I want it right here. Get Adam. it right I in want the it right corner there. of his and look, look what's going to happen. It's going to drip. You uh, little. And then if I want, if it goes too high, it goes too high. It stays too high. Yeah. So it needs to be There's right that here. Perfect. It's not going to stay though. Keep talking. Hi. Heck, you're just going to hold it the entire episode. You're going to hold it. Yeah, hold, hold it. <laughs> For your sweet face. <laughs> wow. This is a big deal. It's here, episode I'll hold one. This one. I'll hold this one this way. Okay. And then it's like being that pampered. That way. There you go. Go, Adam. Go. 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 We're going to be talking about the Mandalorian today because I could barely hold it together last night trying to download Disney Plus. I was very, very excited. I was able to get it early. Hold up. Uh, I was able to get get it downloaded early on uh, <laughs> on on our Roku, uh-huh. and uh, I was pretty excited to be able to finally, after so much anticipation, log into Disney Plus and check out this show. The second that I saw that I could actually log in, I stopped what I was doing, I threw everything on the floor, and I yeah. jumped on the couch and I was like, "Everyone, assemble!" And you stayed up till four a.m. I did, I did. Watching so there's everything. a lot of stuff on Disney Plus, as we all know. There's the 4K restorations of Star Wars, which, if you're someone like me, I've been pixel fucking it to death. And and just seeing all, all the things that they've changed. <laughs> I think you should explain that term to people nah, who don't I know. I won't. It's fine. Okay, never mind it's then. Fine. It's pretty uh, self explanatory. Yeah, yeah pretty much. You know, so I've been like going through and, and, and looking at all that stuff and seeing like what they've changed yeah, and everything. Yeah. But that's not what we're gonna be talking about. We're gonna be talking about the Mandalorian. Yeah, so let's <laughs> set up why we're talking about the Mandalorian yeah. and what we are planning to do with the Mandalorian. Right. So we told people we're gonna be doing a podcast for the Mandalorian, and as obviously if you're watching this, this is not a podcast. But we decided that the first episode was was get, was a perfect opportunity for us to talk about the thing, the show itself, but also to let you know that going forward, every episode of the Mandalorian podcast will be exclusive on Patreon. It's kind of the same thing we've done with Titans, except for Titans, we didn't actually make a first episode video Correct. talking about the very first episode of season two. Mm-hmm. But for this, we thought, okay, this is a really, really great opportunity to sort of bring you guys in let, and let you know what we're doing on Patreon. We're going to be doing podcasts for not just The Mandalorian, not just Titans, but potentially other shows in the futures as well. Yeah. And we're going to make those all accessible on Patreon first. And then when the season ends, we're probably going to drop all those episodes all at the same time publicly for everybody yeah. else to consume. Yeah. 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 Uh, but for now, it's going to be all exclusively on Patreon, and the thing that I'm excited about is, other than talking about the show, is for Patreon to potentially grow and allow us to be able to talk about more shows. Yes, I really want sure. to do a podcast about Smallville. Yeah. My girlfriend has been yeah. wanting to do it with me as well, so yeah. we're hoping we'd be able mm-hmm. to do that. Right, and, and and not only that, like we can also do shows that aren't necessarily within the superhero genre. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, you know, there's absolutely. so much stuff out there. Things like yes. Chernobyl, yeah. even things on Disney Plus. Right. HBO Max is probably going to have a lot of cool stuff. I wanna, so I want to rewatch uh, season one, part one of Primal. Yep. Before, like yeah. next year oh, before yeah. part two comes I out. I just saw that on yeah. Friday, I believe. Yeah. It's so good, and I need to talk about that. Yeah, yeah. right, right. Yeah. I know. I'm very, very excited. But for now, we're going to be talking about the very first episode of The Mandalorian. So if you don't know the premise of the show, the premise of the show is that it takes place five years after Return of the Jedi. Adam, they know. And the main <laughs> story is about a Mandalorian, <laughs> and we're going to follow his journey for the next eight episodes. But in this yeah. first episode, the thing that got me really excited, right off the bat, you could tell that this show was made by people who have a deep, deep, deep love for Star Wars yeah. and the deep, kind of deep cut, lore of Star Wars as yes, well. Absolutely. The first yes, episode absolutely. is directed by Dave Filoni. It's his first live action yeah. debut. So happy for Dave. Yeah, Congrats, absolutely. Mr. Dave Filoni. Great, great he great has job. been great job. A, a Padawan of George Lucas's for many, 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 many years when he was brought in to I work on all, Clone Wars. <laughs> I mean, he literally got to work next to George oh, yeah. Lucas, okay. so that's a pretty okay. amazing honor yeah. all in itself. Uh, but very exciting. I-, I loved the Clone Wars CG cartoon that he did, mm-hmm. and I have have been looking forward to seeing Dave Filoni transition over into live action. Uh, and he's simultaneously working on the new season of the Clone Wars, which will debut in February. Ooh, cool. So he's very much just like fully – yeah just fully wrapped in the Star Wars world. And I think for a show like Mandalorian, where you're going to explore – and sort of an undefined part of the Star Wars timeline up to this point. Yeah. I think it's really great to have someone who's so in. Immersed in immersed the world. Immersed in that lore Absolutely. and that world. Yeah. I mean, you kind of have to be in order to write a story so well. Like, what we saw in this episode, I, I said it in my tweet. I was like, mm. somebody's watching Samurai Jack. Like, <laughs> yeah. somebody's watching some old classic stuff yeah. that really, really made me enjoy this episode more than I've enjoyed a lot of 
regular series kind of uh, content recently. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the pacing was perfect. Like it just moved along. It felt like an old western, but it also felt refreshing, yeah. like refresh and new at the same time. Um, th- I thought it was a little bit dark, like film wise. It, w- mm. it was a little bit too dark for me, but maybe that was just the rumor, the screen that I was watching it on. Mm. But there were some cases where I saw where it was a little dark to kind of see what was going on. But I do love that they gave uh, Horatio Sands and Brian Poussein some <laughs> some parts because you know they're so mega good. Star Wars so geeks. Yeah. And what that got me thinking was like, man, all these mega Star Wars geeks in Hollywood are going to have an opportunity to be yeah. in Star Wars at this point, yeah. you know? Which is really, really cool because I love Horatio Sands in anything, really. Right. Yeah. Uh, and it to see him as the alien in the beginning was awesome. It was really fun because I was like, wait. I know that Me voice. Too. And I'm Same. like, who is that? Me too. Oh my God. <laughs> I know. It's Choo Choo. <laughs> I didn't really it's realize Horatio. who it was until he was captured and in, in the uh, the bottom floor mm-hmm. of the Mandalorian ship. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. Uh, and so I was like, oh shit, that's my boy Horatio. <laughs> mm-hmm. So yeah, this this show hit so many good things for me and there's so much to unpack on it, but I want to hear what you guys initially thought of this show. I really liked it, yeah. but the ending made me really love it. Because are we doing this okay. is a spoiler thing? This is a full spoiler thing? Of course. Because it's episode one. I mean, yeah, so we're talking about the episode. I was digging on it, I was grooving on it, I was digging the mm-hmm. pace, but I had to like correct my brain because yeah. there was a moment early on where I yeah. was like, This feels like like am I am I being bored? Am I is this boring? Is this going too slow? Uh-huh. No. Uh-huh. I'm just so used to Star Wars movies yeah, yeah. going from planet to planet to planet, you know, right. just at such a fast pace that right. I was like, okay, 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 okay. Try to get take used to this. Easy. Try to get used to this. Yeah. Take it easy. Take it in. And it's only 38 minutes long, right. which was also a surprise. <laughs> there you go. Only 38 minutes long. It's, uh, uh, um, uh, and uh, what what's cool is that I realized while watching it, I'm like, this is trying to chase that Western um pacing yeah and we're gonna get seven more episodes of this right. and we're really gonna because the episode is not explaining a bunch of stuff it's no not, right. it's doing great world building yes but also while watching it i'm kind of in the in between because i was watching it with my girlfriend abby and at first she thought straight up that it was boba fett right and i was like right. no 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 no. this is a new you know because she was like it'd be cool if this show wasn't about boba fett but about right. i'm like that's not boba fett yeah and she's like oh okay because yeah. it's not you know it's 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 interesting how the show works I think best for people that are pretty knowledgeable about Star Wars. Yeah. But what's cool is that it's not hitting you over the head with this is after Return of the Jedi. Right, right, it's right. It's like right. it's all there if you kind of know yeah. what to listen yeah. for. Yeah. But, but it's, it's not, not the primary focus correct. of the show. And the right. primary focus is this character, yes. this as of yet unnamed Mandalorian character, right. played, I think, a great job by Pedro Pascal. Absolutely. Great physicality, great voice. Yep. And I know that in episode one, they say, you know, they keep reiterating, like, is it true you guys will never take your helmets off? Yeah. And I know that as a Star Wars fan, that's true. Right. And we see a little bit of stuff that I'm sure that huge fans of Boba Fett and Mandalorian, like, lore in Star Wars were right. geeking out. It's never really been explored. Exactly. No, it never has. Action. To see the, the, the armor being made, Dude, and I'm like, this I was is dope. geeking at that, because I love seeing stuff like yeah. that. But it's, at the same time, it's not over-explaining stuff. It just kind of is. Yeah. And I could see that that might grab people and that might not grab people. Right. If you're not already familiar with that, you might right. just be like, okay, well, why should I care about that? And yeah. how can I connect with this character who yeah. we don't see his face? Right. I know. I rewatched the trailer, too, and I'm like, I know we're gonna, he's going to take his helmet off. Eventually, because yeah. Because it's the yeah. same thing with, you know, you set up a rule. You will break the rule if it gives you a good story moment. If yeah. Star Trek yeah. tells us constantly, Spock has no emotion, right. you better the damn well believe yeah. multiple episodes, yeah. that motherfucker crying, well, because that leads to you know good story. To it, when you go, oh my God, Spock's crying? Well, right. it's, a it's a big deal. I've said all this stuff before. I, so I think what's going to come into play yeah. is the little baby that we saw. Yes, yeah. love, that, him, love that ending. Him having to take off his helmet maybe to protect the baby or oh. like something, like somebody's going to make him choose, like take your helmet off or I'm slicing this so, little mother. You know, it's you know? possible. Yeah. And, it, and so that's, and that's like that. what I'm excited about. So I really like this as a pilot, as an episode one. I didn't love it the way that I loved every other Star Wars thing. Mm-hmm. You know, there's varying degrees of love. But by the end of this, I went, what a great, okay, let's go right. into the right. rest of the story. Mm-hmm. And now it felt, it reminded me of classic Westerns. It reminded me of um, 
uh oh my god i can't believe i'm blanking um uh the the manga and then the the japanese films um lone wolf lone wolf and cub yep right into old man logan yep where wolverine literally has a hulk baby yep at the end of that story and he's like all right i guess i'm gonna raise it like i gotta take care of it's a little green thing you know so at the end of this i'm like oh my as soon as i as soon as we saw what it was yeah i was like i am Fucking yeah. in Lone on this. Hub. Baby oh, Yoda? Yeah, exactly. A new baby Yoda? A new creature a new that creature. is of Yoda's race. Because yeah. at this point, Yoda's already 900 years old. And yeah. dead. And, and dead. Oh, yeah, and dead. Yeah. Yeah. He's a ghost. Well, also, on top <laughs> of that, right. the, the, the species that Yoda is has always been one of the most mysterious and undefined things in the Star Wars lore. Yeah, absolutely. And George Lucas has kind of kept it that purposeful. Yeah. And, and it's never really purposely been, been explored in comic books, graphic yeah. novels, whether it's expanded universe or, or, or not. And we've had one other character that's sim- that's of Yoda's species in episode one. And it was Yaddo. Yep. It was another member of the Jedi council. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. when it came to episode two and beyond, that character kind of disappeared out of the movies and, and right. n- was never really spoken of again. Right. So the fact that we're going back and we're going to now potentially explore and, or have some sort of supporting character. That's yeah. a 50 year old baby. Yeah. Uh, that is a <laughs> Yoda species. So is pretty of, yeah. awesome. It's going to yeah, start talking like really cool. baby Herman from, from Roger <laughs> Rabbit. <laughs> right. Hey, come exactly. on, pick come me on. up. What are you doing? I'm 50 years old. <laughs> Change my diaper. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. Looking for my cigar. I am. Where is it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so that's kind of my overall thoughts. Yeah. And I really dug the cast. I thought that they were all Same. fantastic. Yeah. Carl Weathers was dope. Amazing voice, amazing pre- That dude ages so well. Oh, yeah. Because he was like, that's Apollo Creed in the first rock. Yeah. Fir- and he looks just like he does he in the first rock. Yeah. He looks great. He's got shorter hair, um, and that's yeah. about it. Yeah. Nick Nolte, as the voice of that guy, was pretty great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have spoken. Yeah. That guy was yep. great. I have yep. spoken. Taika Waititi was great. Sucks that he died. Yep. I was honestly bummed that I'm like, oh, I'm, man. I'm okay with I that. I wanted him I'm to o- be. I'm okay with but that. But he's going to direct an episode later. Yeah. yeah. He'll, you know. he I mean, they can use him to do other voices, As long as Marvel hasn't killed Korg. I'm fine. <laughs> you can't kill Korg. He still has Korg. And yeah. then my favorite part of the episode, hands down, was Werner Herzog. Me too. That dude that voice is, is so good. It's incredible. Yeah, I want. I yeah. want to read the synopsis, the summary in Werner Herzog's Do voice. It. We meet the Mandalorian on an unnamed planet, collecting his final bounty. Once collected, he reconvenes with Griff Karga to collect his winnings. When a new mysterious bounty is placed before him, it leads him to a mysterious client and enough Beskar steel to form a new pauldron for his mission. Upon arriving to a desert planet, an Ugnat moisture farmer helps the Mandalorian to his bounty who, along with IG-11, recover the bounty. (laughs) I think that's how we need to have you introduce every <laughs> other podcast, podcast that we do. I'll do it. So it's I guess you're just going to do every yeah. podcast that we ever produce. I'll work on my Werner Herzog. <laughs> yeah. It's the most fun. That guy is incredible. Yeah. His presence is great. His voice was great. Yeah. Just that whole scene with like the do- like the scientists coming in and there's mm, right. all these Dr. like those stormtroopers that were like, I'm like, you guys have seen some shit. Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. I don't want to mess with those what guys. Don't miss. What harpened yeah. to you? <laughs> those what <laughs> harpened here? <laughs> yeah, it was really great. Those guys don't miss. Exactly. No, those guys don't miss. I really like one the the one of the shots that really astounded me which felt kind of like an old school almost 80s action movie was uh when they were pinned down in that area and he had to grab the gun yeah. like mm. like the big machine gun yeah. i could that's sort of like a, to me that felt like a throwback to arnold schwarzenegger in predator where, where he we grabs the mini gun we just terminator 2 and i'm like man i'm feeling this 80s vibe right now right mm-hmm. exactly mm-hmm. right so when he was on that thing just doing circles i was like Yes, this yep. is dope. So it's giving me heart. It's giving me good story. It's giving yeah. me great action. It's giving me everything that I've really wanted from a from a Star Wars property for a while. Yeah, and uh, I didn't know that I was missing it. And this yeah. is really strong this is pilot. Awesome. Really strong pilot. I think really strong for Disney Plus to come out the gate with like, oh, here's what we can do. Yeah. But here's the exciting thing. Again, I rewatched the trailer, uh-huh. and in the trailer, there's some shots, there's some moments, there's yeah. some stuff that I was reminded of, and I'm going, I bet you whatever episode that is. I'm gonna like more than episode one. Probably. It's a strong pilot, but yeah. it, like after what the after the first episode was done with everything that the show sets up, I yeah. was like, I cannot imagine this will be my favorite episode because yeah, we, right. because what the rest of the story could like unfold is right. is incredible. Right, so right, right. cannot wait to see the rest of this. Absolutely, yeah. that like I said, yeah. I, this is giving me strong Samurai Jack vibes. So we are yet to see the best to come because we, like from the very beginning, you think of a bounty hunter, you think probably a villain. 
probably not yeah. that likable of a guy. Yeah. He's going out. He chopped a dude in half in the first five minutes. Mm-hmm. Maybe not the nicest guy. But then when he goes to get his pauldron, he gets flashbacks of what he was. He was a foundling. He didn't know his parents. And he he's going to donate some of his stuff to a foundling and was like. The precious metal yes, that yes. he got, he used a little bit for his pauldron, but he's also giving the rest away to the rest of the foundlings. And then at the very end, when the little baby reaches out for his hand, you're oh. like. I can connect with this guy. This guy yeah. has a heart, even yeah. though he's a murderous bounty hunter. He killed. This is how. This is how good that thing at the end was. Again, watching it with Abby, and this is her reaction. Right. She's into the show. She's enjoying it, whatever. But she's also kind of like, oh, I don't know about this main character. Yeah. Again, you can't see his face. Right. And we were talking about well, in Mandalorian lore, you can't mm-hmm. in the culture, you can't they take it off. Take it's their a cultural thing. Off, yeah. But I was telling her, I'm like, I'm sure the show we're going to see his head. Right. We're going to see his beautiful face. Right. But then at the end, when the thing unveiled the baby creature yeah. in there, she yeah. was like. Oh my God. And like <laughs> loved it. And she loves Taika Waititi uh-huh, as much uh-huh. as the next person. Right. And as soon as Taika was like, like we have to eliminate it yeah. and was about and to like shoot it. Off. Yeah. Abby was like, don't you dare fucking shoot that baby. Like she was so like, <laughs> don't you dare. And so then when attached. the, when the blast went off and there was that half a second yeah. beat and then IG, IG 11 falls, yeah, yeah. Abby was like, good. She good. was like, good, you die. <laughs> like, she was in it. That yeah. was it. That was the so hook. So it's a yeah. really great, it's a really great hook. Yeah, and it yeah, really it gets really, me excited for the rest really, of it. It was really, really good. I think the other yeah. thing that, that for me is like someone who, I love all corners of Star Wars, but I feel like because the movies are so Get are close. so like <laughs> are go. so like there big, yes. and and they're they this feels they truly like yeah. are world changing and galactic. They right. like influence everything that happens in the galaxy. It's so nice to have a story that's so sort of small and centralized yeah. and about one character, yeah. one mission, and another mission, and a little a little subset of the Star Wars universe. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I feel like yeah. because of the movies, it's kind of the same thing. Initially, when it started, I thought, okay, am I really into this, or is it moving too slow? Like, how do I feel about the pacing? Right, right, right. right, right. But by the time you get to the end, it you really appreciate the fact that Favreau and Filoni, they could have very easily gone big with this. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And instead of going big... They really focused on character moments, absolutely, and getting and allowing us to get to know the Mandalorian. Because yeah, in the first scene, he's really set up as traditionally a bounty hunter who right. just kills for That's his and does whatever really he has good. to do yep. to get his bounty. Right. Mm-hmm. In this show, there's a little bit more to that character. Absolutely. We find out that he is he is he's not maybe necessarily from Mandalore. He probably right. was born somewhere else and right. was like brought in to be right. to become right. a part of the Super Mandalorian cool. family. Yeah. What does that mean? Yep. Is yep. that why he's an empathetic character? Is that right. why he donates do his best car Do the rest of the Mandalorians feel this way? Is yeah. he an outcast? What exactly. What is going on in this? Another moment that I really like too, which I'm just going to keep saying Samurai Jack over again. Mm-hmm. It reminded me of the, um, the Jack Jump the Jack Jump episode yeah. mm-hmm. where he was yeah. really getting along with the natives of yeah. the planet and he was learning from them was when he was taming that giant, uh, whatever it was, that two legged beast thing. Mm-hmm. And instead of in this episode, right, yeah. exactly. It happens in this episode and he's just, instead of trying to force it, he went in calm. So you realize that he is a very flexible individual and you just get some beautiful character moments from him through just a little tiny, yeah. a yep. little tiny interaction with this giant yep. beast, and that know? speaks you to are a Mandalorian. Yeah, yeah exactly. and that speaks to like that you speaks to the mythosaur the, or whatever yeah. it was yeah. called. Yeah. Dude, the mythosaurs, they're awesome. I need to they're see awesome a picture looking. of a mythosaur, yep. yeah. um, which have not, I don't have not been explored cinematically either. But they've been in the comic books and all kinds of stuff. Yep. And it's kind of like how we were introduced to Boba Fett, and I I'm would love it if we saw a mythosaur show up in the yo, show. Yo, this show makes me feel like I'm reading a Star Wars novel or yeah. comic book. Yeah. It yeah. feels like expanded universe. Yeah. It feels like legacy stuff. It feels like modern, you know, in continuity, yeah. which is awesome to get yeah. that feeling of like, I want to go and read the um, the Chuck Wendig novels, the aftermath mm-hmm. that take place again right. between Return of the Jedi and, and Force Awakens. I need yeah. to go back and read those, man. Yeah, and I think, you know, also... It had a lot of Rogue One vibes to me as well, yes. and I think a lot of that is because the mm-hmm. cinematographer is the same cinematographer, yeah. Greg Frazier, oh. yeah. who's also going to be working on the Batman. Yeah, uh, and I and I sort of love that. I love that element of bringing in people who have previously kind of dipped their toes in the Star Wars world and are getting to mm-hmm. now expand and play more in that. So I love that. It had a continuity, like there was a a continuity yes. there that felt very familiar to yeah. me when I was watching it. Um, and I think it's also very impressive for John Favreau to to be to be a guy who. Started as an independent filmmaker, has worked his way up, has worked really, really hard and done all, all sorts of incredible things, done movies like Chef, mm-hmm. one of my favorite movies ever, yeah. but then can also go off and make and create this series, mm-hmm. right. pitch it, and it's sort of being accepted with open arms by by most people who are watching yeah. it. Yeah. And collaborating with someone like Dave Filoni, like, it's really the perfect recipe for a Star Wars 
success, right. I think. Right. Agreed. Yeah, I agree. Agreed. And I think he's he's tapping the right talent. Yeah. This episode felt like it was made by people who really loved and wanted to be a part of it. And so, it honestly yeah. feels a lot less like, not that the Star Wars movies feel like they're made by committee, but I think because the Star Wars movie are su- such an important cornerstone of Lucasfilm right, and right. Disney, there's a lot more pressure on the movies to perform yeah, and yeah. be Dude, accepted by worldwide I, audiences. I, I, I said this on Collider Live yeah. earlier today. It's crazy that this is coming out weeks before Episode Nine. There's right. no pressure right, on right. Mandalorian. Yeah. No pressure at all. At no. It's, like yeah. you should it's not, setting the bar, really. Right. Yeah, you should not be looking at the Mandalorian to get your, like, Okay, well, I'm coming off of the Last Jedi, so I need to. It's like, no, 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 Episode Nine, dummy. Yeah, right. that's what yeah. that's gonna be. Yeah, right. and it's coming out in just a few weeks. Yeah. yeah. So if you watch Mandalorian and go, yeah, but I need to know more about the First Order and the Empire, and it's mm-hmm. like, right. that's happening in the yeah. big show. You'll get that. This Don't is worry not about the that. big show. This yeah. is this is a, a great uh, writer director coming in, and like you guys are saying, grabbing great talent. I love Ludwig Granson's score so in good. this. Yep. The second that the Mandalorian shows up in the bar in yep. the opening when the door opens, it's yeah. funky. It's full Western, Western sci-fi yeah. it's fantasy. It's wonderful. Yeah. He's really. I loved his stuff in Creed. I loved his yep. stuff in Black Panther. Mm-hmm. So good. Um, I like. Too. I like his Venom score. He did Venom. Mm. Mm. But but uh, <laughs> but this <laughs> is okay. Okay. fantastic. Okay, <laughs> and uh, and it's also cool that like this will be like the third major. Um, Star Wars character a lead that's like played by a Latino actor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's uh, in, in, awesome. in in like I mean, in like a Pedro handful Pascal. of yeah. years. Amazing. This Chilean American actor. I yeah. think he, no Chilean. Is he Chilean American? Uh, yeah, Chilean American. Pedro Pascal is wonderful. Yeah. I love his sense of humor. I love the guy, his persona in real life yeah. and stuff. So I'm rooting for him, and I'm so happy for him. But yeah. like, he had a great voice and a great physicality in this, yeah. and it is tough to do what he did With and not to not be able to yeah. emote with mm-hmm. the face. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we got him. We got Oscar Isaac. We got uh, um, uh, Diego Luna. Diego, Diego Luna, so yeah. crazy. That's, right. That's yeah. so crazy. Not to mention a couple other brown guys in we're Rogue One and here and there. Guys, we're being seen. <laughs> it's pretty. It's pretty it's wonderful. Awesome. It's yeah. really. It's really yeah. really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, and I think like you know, as an uh, the one thing with this, Uh-oh. and I think it's an incredible, th- I think it's an incredible thing to be sort of like the founding father of this on Disney Plus. Yeah, yeah. you've uh-huh. now set the bar so high I see, I see. Oh, okay. that okay. the show, like we're saying, and I do believe exactly I, what you said. I do yeah. believe that ev- episode by episode by episode, the show is going to get better, yes, right. and sleeker, yes, and everything about it is going to improve. So by yeah. the time we get to episode eight, we're going to be in love with every single character, yeah. location, yeah. Yeah. world, mm-hmm. everything. Mm-hmm. At the same time, mm-hmm. when Marvel debuts Falcon and the Winter Soldier next year, yeah. they better bring it. That, yeah. So that's what I told you guys in that message earlier. Yeah. I was like, dude, every show has to bring it at yes. this point. Yep. Not, just, not just the Marvel shows. Get out of here, show. Jeff Goldblum. Come every, on. Everybody who's offering a streaming service yes. Yes. needs to step up. Green Lantern on HBO Max dude. needs to <laughs> pop. Every Ooh. show, like every Ooh. animated show, anything yeah. that's happening yeah. at this point, dude, Disney just set the bar. They're like, yeah. hey, guys. This is what we're doing. Boom. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. got to beat this because right now I'm like, why am I watching anything else? Not even beat it, though. You got to play at our level. Well, yeah. Because like, to- okay, we all know Marvel movies, I love I love the majority of them. Right. But you get sometimes third acts of right. movies where the visual effects are really not they up to par. Wonky, but yeah. we accept yeah. them because we're like, oh, it's a cinematic experience. We understand the complexity of making a movie. Right. When you're spending a year working on a show right. that's eight episodes, yeah. Yeah. you better put yeah. incredible amounts of time into every right, single episode right, yeah. and deliver. Yeah, no, I, I 100% agree, and you're right. I should have said you have to meet this bar at this point yeah. because... And then you can push it. And then you can push it, but at this point, you ha- that's the bar. Yeah. Like, that is it, which makes me nervous about other shows because there's other properties that I love that I want to be treated mm-hmm. I'm not with, this, with this level of... Uh, Production and care. talent, okay, and yeah. care and love and everything that I'm nervous about. But right. if you break it down episode by episode, I think that with with this pilot, it is a lot of setup. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. hook at the end is yeah. just setup. It's awesome. Yeah. Wait yeah. till episode eight. This thing right. could bring me to tears potentially yeah. Yeah. with where it goes. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. I think that when Falcon and Winter Soldier premieres, I think that when right. WandaVision premieres, we're going to get similar pilots, mm-hmm. similar first episodes. Which I'm where totally it'll be okay like with. Set up where they'll yeah. be like, okay, this isn't a movie, but now we're following these characters here, and this right. is what they're doing. And at the end of episode one, this dramatic hook. Right, and we're going right, to be right, like, right. oh, snap. Damn. And maybe we'll be like, nah, epi- the finale of Ma- Mandalorian was way better than the premiere of Falcon and Winter Soldier. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. Good, it should be. <laughs> it should be. <laughs> right, and I right, have right. faith that with this show premiering the way that it is, and Disney looking at maybe that kind of formula mm-hmm. that like they could sort of copy paste some of that 
TV formula to other stuff while mm-hmm. then bending and breaking the rules mm-hmm. within that formula. Right, I think right, it's right. strong. You know, Falcon and Winter Soldier episode one is not going to end with Baron Zemo getting killed. Right, right you know exactly. What I mean? Like, it's exactly. not going to be the most. We be also this said insane. that the beginning of Avengers Endgame wouldn't have Thanos die. Yeah. So let's be careful and what we say. You know what? That too. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Good point. Well, exactly. well, well put. Well put. Well put. Yeah. I, I have a feeling that all of these shows, I don't think they're going to be following a formula at this point. Yeah. I think mm-hmm. every show that is on the slate to premiere at this point has been put there very much on purpose to give everybody a taste of what it's going to be like because that's so. really what they have to hit all these so. target audiences because mm-hmm. the servers crash day one like mm-hmm. this is the biggest streaming service on the planet right now which you know i saw that night in Part of me totally understands the frustration of like getting a new streaming service and wanting to just enjoy it yeah but the other side of me is like because we run tech here every single day i'm yeah. like Man, it is yeah. bound to happen. Yeah, yeah. nothing no, is perfect. They would have had to have done some sort of a soft rollout months yeah. ago to be yeah. able to like debug everything. Right, right. And even right. that's like the, it, those are really, really hard things to do. Well, yeah, yeah especially when it's your first time around. Yeah. You know, yeah. you could follow whatever blueprints happening, but right. until it's happening, you don't really know. How. I mean, we run into problems here and it's just super I have to hold setup. my headset the whole time right, exactly. I mean come on <laughs> exactly <laughs> as well oiled so, as machine you think you are you're always going to run into things you all, we'll always run into uh, problems one thing yeah. that felt really good watching the show was seeing Salacious B. Crumb or at least another one of those yeah, uh, in a cage Kowokian, uh, what do they call them Kowokian monkey lizards you being <laughs> barbecued how do you know that well right it, it was funny It was I had to write it down because I couldn't remember the Kowokian part um, monkey lizards it was hilarious because we were watching it last night and uh, Mika was here and, uh-huh. and Molly Nico was were uh-huh. here, and they're both like, "Oh, they were so sad." And I'm like, "Fuck you, salacious crumb." Yeah, that thing you is not cute. That. that thing is not cute yeah. like a pork. Yeah, that thing no, is not cute, not cute like no a pork. pork. That no. that little <laughs> that's a little <laughs> naked that's a little looking <laughs> like evil piece of shit. Thing. That's a little, little shit. Evil yeah. piece of shit. Yeah, yeah I think well, that's that. another thing we shade on too is that they used puppets. They used a lot of practical yeah. effects yeah. in this thing. There was a little person in a little droid thing. Yeah, yeah. There was. I mean, Nick Nolte's character, the Ognot, yeah, the moisture farmer. Um, he. He was all like that, that was a mostly makeup, face. right? Like and with puppet like I animatronic I, I, lips. Or I, maybe I, a CG I'm face. not 100 percent sure if it's makeup. I thought it was motion, like a not motion capture, but um, like a puppeteer. Yeah, I'm yeah, sure it's yeah. a puppeteer because it's the probably lip flaps don't match perfectly. Yeah, yeah. and, and it's that, I like, but that, like that, I'm it's totally that Star okay Wars with charming. That. Like, oh, it's not the, perfect, but you can tell that it's yeah. So you put Nick Nolte in there, and I'm like, I'm in. Yeah, no, 100. percent It was really good. So I really appreciated basically everything they did on this show. Cool. It gives me a lot of hope that what we are going to get is worth my time and money because yeah. honestly at this point everybody's there's so many services trying to get your attention what three, three, three days homie you get episode well, two i know i'm right. really excited and we are we going to talk about it in three days oh yeah okay cool well then i'm excited for this i'm excited for the future uh disney plus has my attention at this yeah. point so yeah i mean for me as like yeah i mean it, not just me but like as people who love star wars there's enough in, the, in this show that if you love the lore the yeah. deep lore of yeah. star wars the mandalorian lore yeah. and you love and appreciate all that sort of stuff this does a really really great job of right. the s- sort of setting up the potentiality of like how much oh, we can dive yeah. into yeah. Mandalore and all that sort yeah. of stuff. Yeah. At the same time, it's telling a very new, fun, and unique story yes. that's building a lot of mystery. It's a very, it very much harkens back to, to the themes in Western movies and all right. that stuff. Right. But like, that's why you get Dave Filoni and mm-hmm. John Favreau to mm-hmm. make this. Right. Dave yeah. Filoni is that guy. Yep. Yep. And I'm yep. really excited yep. to see, I think Rick Famuyiwa is directing the next episode. Oh, oh, so I'm excited to see real. that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited for that. And uh, yeah, I'm just generally super excited to see where the season goes. Yeah, like 100%. this has 100% of my attention. Everything else on Disney Plus is kind of secondary at this point. Yeah, right now, yes. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. And I mean, most of the stuff is not all, but a lot of the stuff is catalog stuff. Yeah. Which yeah, like yeah. for the things that I'm into, I own a lot of it. Right. Um, but yeah. if it's things I want to discover, like yeah. I'll watch it. But like Mandalorian is my number one right, right now. Right, right, right. Yep. And then we have a whole year before Winter Sol- Falcon and Winter Falcon Soldier. Falcon and Winter comes Soldier. Out. So and then time. we also have the What If things. And exactly. All, all Which also looks awesome. Happening. So yeah. really, well, really cool stuff. I have stuff thoughts on, there. on it, but we'll talk about it later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll talk okay. about it. We'll talk about okay. it. Uh, but guys, let us know in the comments below what you thought about this premiere episode of The Mandalorian. And if you haven't done so yet, jump over to patreon.com slash hyper RPG to get all future episodes of the mandalorian podcast yeah i'm very excited to add this to our roster of shows so talk about every single week uh titans yeah. has kind of been on a little bit of like a downfall for us but while you're there so on the patreon you can listen to the titans you can listen yeah. to the titans yeah. as yeah. well on we're on episode two. 10 yeah. uh, of titans right now but i am excited to add this to our roster as well right uh, i love star wars so the fact that i have something that i can 
look forward to every single week for the next month is awesome. That's awesome. So very, very excited. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next week.